Integrin Structure and Function by Anna Havranik and Kate Spencer. What is an integrin, Kate? Integrins are a subset of cell adhesion molecules. They are signaling receptors that control both cell binding to extracellular matrix proteins and intracellular responses after adhesion. Well, Kate, what does an integrin look like? Integrins are heterodimers. This means that the integrin is composed of two different chains called alpha and beta subunits. Alpha and beta subunits are non-covalently associated transmembrane glycoproteins. Each subunit has an affinity for different ligands. Each subunit has a single membrane spanning helix, usually a short unstructured cytoplasmic tail. The size varies, but typically the alpha and beta subunits contain about 1,750 amino acids respectively. So what do integrins do? Integrin receptors bind to extracellular proteins in response to environmental signals. How do these mechanisms control the degree of integrin binding? Well, Anna, the two mechanisms for controlling integrin binding are affinity modulation and avidity modulation. Avidity modulation depends on the number of contacts between integrins and the extracellular matrix proteins. The more contacts, the stronger the bond. Affinity modulation depends on the change in receptor conformation. A change in integrin conformation results in an altered affinity for its ligands. One theory states that the straighter the integrin, the higher its affinity for the ligand. How is an integrin activated? In the inactive form, the alpha and beta chains are bent backwards towards the plasma membrane and the receptors are not bound. The integrin receptor binds to its ligand and straightens out. During the binding process, the alpha and beta cytoplasmic tails separate. This reveals binding sites for intracellular signaling and adapter molecules. What other circumstances can affect the activation of integrins? Removal of calcium and magnesium cations results in folding of the integrin and loss of adhesion. Restoring cations results in adhesion by strengthening the integrin. What other important things are good to know about integrins, Kate? Well, Anna, it's important to know that there are five types of integrin clusters. Wow, what are they? The first one is a focal contact. They are small and short-lived. They form at the leading edge of migrating cells and are induced by the stimulation of actin filament growth near the plasma membrane. The focal contact increases in size to form the focal complex. They persist for several minutes. They form elongated structures called focal adhesions. Focal adhesions bind to actin stress fibers. The most stable integrin complex is the fibular adhesion. They are able to resist a lot of mechanical force. They are also associated with fibular fibronectin. The last integrin cluster is called the hemidesmosome. They are formed on the basal surface of epithelial cells and are linked to intermediate filament networks. The complexes that attach to these integrin clusters are composed of many different transmembrane receptors, cytoskeletal proteins, adapters, and enzymes. The composition varies. Collectively, they are known as the adhesin of the cell. What is the purpose of the different proteins in the clusters? Some of these proteins are signaling proteins and are found in signaling complexes. The two pathways are FAK and SHC. In FAK pathway, the principal signaling protein is focal adhesion kinase. It binds to integrins directly or to proteins talon and paxillin. In the SHC pathway, the principal signaling protein is SHC. It associates with integrins through an adapter protein called calveolin. Why are integrins so important? Well, Anna, they play a key role in development. If cells can't adhere to the basal lamina and other components of the extracellular matrix, the cells die, which results in many problems. In mice, when the beta-1 integrin malfunctions, they suffer many problems, including severe hair loss. Thank you for learning. 